the magic of bows. Okay, your job is you need to be able to jump on a horse and take down a 2,000 pound animal that's pretty upset and can run up to 35 miles an hour. You need to be able to def defend <clears throat> your home. You need to be able to go out and attack other people. So what, you, what are you going to carry with you? You know, a 90 pound compound bow, titanium riser, peep sights, altimeters, GPS locators. No. And therein lies the ambiguity, ambiguity <clears throat> doing more <clears throat> with less. You're going to take a tiny little splint of wood. You're going you're gonna to take a few of these things made out of stone. You're going to take some of this stuff to stick on the back and make your string. And you're going to go out and do everything you need to do with <laughs> nothing more than this. You know, we talk about, I can make fire, a hand drill, or I can create a shelter out in the woods. You know, it kind of goes along with doing more with less. It's all you need. What would be considered a tiny little splint of cherry, some heat shaping, some tillering, some sinew. This is Cody. This is Cody's work for stone from stones and bones. Look how thin that is. The impossible point in the notches in that thing. Just saying. You know, using this and this and this and not much material. You can conquer you can conquer your world. This is what I what really draws me to um, the horse bows, the plains bows. <clears throat> you know, you look at, and I'm not slamming anything, you know, to each his own. You do you, I'll do me. You look at the finery, and I respect this. You go off and you see bow makers that make these incredibly crafted, decorated, in many cases, rattlesnake skin, um, dice, painting. It's beautiful Osage longbows. I want to make some of those too. Nothing wrong with that. But then you look at like the horsemen of the plains with the bows that they use to do these incredible things. And you look at it, and, and I still, I will always look at a little gull wing, you know, a 40 inches to 50 inches. So there were some longer ones, you know, but typically they were pretty small. And you look at it, and your first impulse is that's a kid's bow. But would you truly want to go up against one of those, those warriors that were good at those bows? They did everything with them. They won against armed cavalry, you know, with uh, repeating rifles and, and, uh, and revolvers. You know, sometimes you eat the bear, sometimes you don't. But then it goes into this other whole discussion. You never live forever. And I've often thought that your last moment on this earth is a snapshot of where you're going to be in the afterlife. And if you're one of those people that would rather go out on your feet, you know, kind of like, uh, what is that, that famous movie? Um, I can't think. What it was, Robert Redford and Paul Newman in Bolivia, where they've got the entire Bolivian army out there. And they're like loading their, their six shooters. Like, ready? Ready. And they run out there with just their revolvers against the entire Bolivian army. You know? And that's where I think that where you wind up after this mortal coil has seen enough of you, that snapshot in your last moment carries a lot of weight. Anyway, some things to think about. You know, and we, we bow makers, primitive bow makers, are philosophers. We think about stuff while we're grinding away. And that's just some things I think about. Yup, little piece of cherry. And I've got, because it's summertime and it can get mighty, mighty humid, 
I've got one of those those turkey things, you know, deep fat fryer. It's a, a base, you attach your propane to it. Sorry, Biden. And you boil your water, put the foil over it, and you you can you can do some steaming or in some cases with tips, boiling the tips. That's all. That's enough. I'm gonna continue on my bow maker's journey.